Alright everyone, so um, this is just a tutorial of uh, using BlendMe with the new feature of auto zoning which makes uh, generating energy plus models much much easier. So what I'm just going to do is um, make a multi-story uh, multi-zone um, uh, office block, it could be it could be anything really. Um, and I'm just going to, so what I'll do is I'll make it 20 by 20, I'll draw out the floor plate to start off with. And uh, this will just take a second. Um, I might do is just scale that down so I'll have a small I suppose atrium thing in the middle um, what I'll do is I'll duplicate that surface and uh, I'll just make the walls um, there you go start to pop it up um, now what I'll do is I'll make a typical facade and then um, I'll just copy that one around. So I'll choose this one here as being my typical facade. Um, and I'll just separate it out to a new object. And what I'll do is if I tab into it, I can make uh, some sections here. And I'll just delete those faces, keeping the edges there. And now I can actually extrude them out, scale them down. So I'll make a little typical window, let's say fill that one up okay now just to make sure you just want to maybe have a look at your normals just to make sure that everything see they get twisted up sometimes when you do that so you just have to select them all and make normals consistent there we go now I've got that I can actually just um, turn on snap and I should be able to copy them along there we go And finally, I'll just want to remove doubles. There we go. So that's a typical facade there. Except that I've got one little edge that doesn't seem to want to... Ah, there we go. That's fixed it up. All right. Didn't select all of my vertices before. So now I've just got those faces there and I'll parent them. Um, and now they're going to become my windows. What I might just do now is make a new window material. Uh, I'll call it window. And I'll just make it a little bit blue. There we go. And I'll add some transparency. Uh, alpha 0 0.5 and I've got to turn on the transparency for those objects there. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a typical facade. Now what I can do is I'll actually just select those and I'll just copy them, I'll duplicate it in the Y direction, and move it over there, duplicate it, rotate it in the Z direction 90 degrees, there we go, there we go, okay, so now I've got it copied all the way around. Uh, now these are going to become zones, these four areas of the floor plate, so what I might just do is separate them out into separate surfaces separate objects. What I can do now, if I go object origin to geometry, you can see I've got my zones all marked out, except these haven't been exploded yet, but don't worry about those. So what I can do now, with everything selected, I'll literally just duplicate them in Z direction, and just, there we go, and duplicate in the Z direction, there we go. Now I just need to put the roof on now, so I'll select those four surfaces duplicate in the Z direction, bring it up to there. Okay, so for the most part that's now complete. Okay. Um, but I do have to actually now explode all the flat faces. So this is where you have to actually start up the add-on. Uh, blend me, architecture, blender EP. And now I should be able to go explode link flat faces. There we go. If I now transform origin to geometry, you can see now every flat surface that's separated has become a separate object, so it's all marked out there. And now um, I should be able to go around and uh, detect and assign all the openings. So if I do that, there we go, you can see it's actually created these relationship lines, these blue lines, it's connected the windows to all of the openings, and you can see if you look down here that if I select an opening, it's actually assigned as an opening with its parent surface. Um, so now I can go through and select everything again 
and detect and assign the zones. And that's the big feature there. So what it's actually done now is made these zone markers in there and automatically hooked them all up to the roofs. And you can see if I actually select this, it's now a surface roof. Similarly, that there's surface slab on ground. These are exterior walls and those are interior walls with all the correct zoning all done for you. It should be all correctly orientated. Um, and it doesn't just do um, con, uh, convex uh, surfaces, it will deal with L shapes. I can do that in a little bit just to, just to prove it. But now these uh, surfaces haven't yet been really assigned a material, so what I'll do is I'll select select objects that have a similar construction, which is none at the moment, so that's all the objects. I'll assign this material here to them and I'll copy that material to everything. What I might just do is rename that to brick because the default is brick. So now all these material things have brick associated with them. Similarly with the windows, this window, it's still assigned as an opaque material, I'll set it to window glazing, that's a deep by default a six millimeter. Um, glazing type. So I can now add shading and everything if I wanted to, and but um, for the most part the energy model is done. So I just have to go down here and go to, I'll leave everything else as default. Um, I'll save the model first of all, just save it to my desktop let's say. Save it as untitled. And then I can export the model and then I should be able to run energy plus and you'll see it warms up and runs straight away. So that's one way to create a nice simple model, um, NG Plus model that works um, with the auto zoning feature. Um, it, uh, just to, to prove that it, that it can do other more complex shapes, what I could do is, while that's still running that simulation, I can select all objects that are also of type zone uh, sorry, of type and delete them. I can now select all these objects and uh, oops, I could have something selected and uh, clear clear constraints. So it's just taken me back to the base model again. The surfaces, so this could have been imported from SketchUp or anywhere. And just to prove that this isn't just for convex surfaces, um, what I might just do is delete that surface there, so that'll make an L-shaped zone down there. Actually, if I can, if I can display uh, object origins, it'll help me to select that, that one there as well. So that's fine. Now I've got this sort of large L-shaped zone, and actually what I might do as well, just to make it even more interesting, is I can delete this roof. Actually, here we go, I'll delete that one and that one, and that wall, maybe that facade. So now I've got this weird kind of, I'll just delete all of that, and these ones there, and I'll get rid of these walls because they're not needed anymore. So there, something like that. And now oh, I've got to get rid of these internal floors as well to make that double height zone. So if I uh, delete that surface. Let's have a look. What do we got? Can maybe get in there and actually select that one on the inside. There we go. So now you can see I've got this L-shaped zone that's double height, and it's neighbouring uh, three-storey kind of other shaped thing with these funny shaped zones. So same sort of process there. If I just select them all now and detect and assign openings first. There we go. So it's made the connections. You can see all the connection lines for the openings. Now if I select them all and just go detect and assign zones. There we go. So it's made a single zone out of that and if I zoom and fly in you can see that all of the surfaces are connected up appropriately with all of the openings so all the relationships are done by default the uh, zone the zone markers that are put in there are replicas just to help you make sure that it's done the right thing 
Uh, but what you could do, that their replicas in their one tenth of a scale. So what I could do is I could um, select objects that are the same uh, type, all those zones. I could move them to another layer now. And if I just set it to about individual origins and I go scale 10 times, that'll scale the zones back up, the zone markers back up to full zone. So you can see that I've actually, it's correctly detected the zones and it's made um, replicas of, of the zone for the zone markers. Okay, so these are just zone markers. So normally they're one tenth scale like that. I can move them back. And that's a more complex zone ready to go in Energy Plus and the other model is finished. Okay, so um, I won't run that model. I, again, you just have to select Export Energy Plus and run it just to get it to run. And you can see up here that it's running this new model now. So that's an um, example of auto zoning in uh, BlendMe with Energy Plus. It makes uh, building Energy Plus models super quick and, um, and easy. Okay, thanks for listening.